The Endangered Species Act, passed by the U.S. Congress in 1973, was a well-meaning attempt at preserving animal populations facing the possibility of extinction. And while the ESA has had some successes, the reality of its implementation for most species has been very different from its intent. The Endangered Species Act Congressional Working Group, a group of members of Congress which evaluated the effects of the ESA, found in its recent published report that the ESA has produced an actual recovery rate of species of only 2%, and less than 5% of the species on the list are actually increasing in numbers, a dismal success rate by any standard. The ESA has lost sight of its original purpose in two ways. First, groups with both political and financial objectives are allowed by the law to hijack the species recovery process through years of ongoing litigation. And second, after more than 40 years on the books, some U.S. Fish and Wildlife bureaucrats are more interested in forcing the letter of the law than fulfilling its intent. The Endangered Species Act is a complex piece of legislation that has been rife with litigation by radical environmental and anti-hunting groups to prevent species who have scientifically and mathematically met the definition of recovery to be removed from the ESA. The Yellowstone grizzly bear and the wolf are just two examples of recovered species still mired in ongoing litigation by the antis. But you should expect that kind of nose-despite-your-face actions from the enemies of conservation. More troubling, U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service caves to political pressure that fly in the face of the best science, while some administrators place more utility on complying with the minutia of regulation than the actual effect on a species. You only have to look at the recent Fish and Wildlife Service ban on the importation of legally hunted ivory from Tanzania and Zimbabwe to see the detrimental effect on wildlife resulting from political pressure. Every credible scientist on the ground agrees with the critical need to harvest elephants in those parts of Zimbabwe where the overpopulation of jumbo is destroying the ecosystem. I've seen the damage for myself and it's not pretty. Banning U.S. hunters' import of ivory changes indigenous people who once benefited from legal hunting into people apathetic towards poachers and worse. And then there's the cheetah. In order to provide a sustainable use incentive for landowners to tolerate the destruction of their livestock, the cheetah was approved for a hunting quota by CITES, the Convention on International Trade in Endangered Species in 1993. But Fish and Wildlife Service refuses to allow its import into the United States. With the majority of international hunters in Africa being American, and without the ability to market to American hunters, the cheetah has become a liability to landowners and thus its numbers have continued to decline. But U.S. Fish and Wildlife officials, citing lack of compliance by cheetah range states with U.S. reporting requirements, continue to support the import ban, despite the obvious negative results to the species they purport to protect. We all believe in the preservation of the world's wildlife. But when well-intended legislation and its implementation are co-opted to the detriment of the species it was intended to protect, then the system is broken. The best available science, not politicians or judges, should determine the course of conservation. You only have to see the results of our Endangered Species Act to see that truth. If you'd like more information on this or other issues that are important to sportsmen and women, or would like a chance to win one of our social media prize giveaways, follow me on Twitter at stevescotttv or at facebook.com slash safarihuntersjournal. Until next time, know the facts and keep preserving the heritage.